All right. So you added some stuff to the to the use cases document. Yes. Um, uh, originally, it was three points. I added two more uh, and clarified uh, after thinking that there are strictly speaking three types of aspects we need to take care of here. And, and, and so it's a little bit of a clarification going on here. So uh, I'm talking about uh, um, enumerating the project states. That would be, for example, um, if the project state, uh, that would be, this has been abandoned. Uh, this is a, a project that needs um, uh, co-maintainers or is up, put up for adoption, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, then it's the um, project needs. This is not what is, uh, this is not a statement about whether or not the project is about to be shut down or whether or not it's right. uh, actively being worked, but rather what kind of help they would appreciate getting. Yeah. Okay. Um, that, like, for example, uh, somebody to do a security review uh, uh, or uh, check if the tests are passing on a new platform or writing documentation or write, creating a new logo for branding or whatever. I made a, I have a notes with a long list of things which uh, have been re recently enriched with um, uh, the Chaos Project's own list of types of contributions, which was pretty uh, um, uh, thorough list that um, gave So is it a, is, is that by. like an enumeration of then things that we can like automate then? It, my, my idea was that uh, um, we put that, that list, which is, uh, I have it in the references down mm -hmm. as, as source materials. Um, as the second link, no, not the second link, um, the first link, oh, it says project lifecycle exploration, I think it was. Yeah. That uh, Google Docs, um, that GitHub page uh, um, has a whole lot of different things one could imagine. Uh, a project would be wanting to help with, with um, during its lifetime. Got Could it. be anything okay. from video audio editing to um, uh, writing a, an art, uh, a presentation for a conference to whatever. Um, so that's a t type of enumeration. And the purpose with that is to spell out uh, the options. So uh, um, in such a way that, first of all, we don't use um, uh, a free text field, which needs to be humanly par human parsed or something, but rather we, it has a standard that ways to, to stand, so we can, uh, uh, the, any tooling that reads the, the SBOM can basically aggregate and say, these so many projects that we use, uh, 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 need a co-maintainer, for example. Mm -hmm. Yep. This is a uh, useful information. Okay. Um, uh, and the final, th uh, th I mean, the third type of um, uh, field or enumer enumeration is what uh, Chris um, mentioned the, on our, in our first meeting, and that's around what the, the intentions of the main Tainer's level of support for a component. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, if a maintainer says uh, this project is done, then uh, it's clearly says so. If uh, if the maintainer says um, that uh, he's going to only casually maintain it, meaning like uh, if there's time, there's time. We have to find out what's meaningful levels there, because uh, there's maybe a little bit of a duplication in. Well, my list of proposals uh, in, uh, that I just mentioned uh, on GitHub. Um, uh, so, so like, well, is least effort, for example, a level which is worth having, or security fixes only, uh, right. or um, uh, is it meaningful to talk about uh, levels of support at all uh, in, a, in, a, in a form of a gradient or a scale? 
Um, uh, and what would that mean? Would it mean like expected number of hours per week or should we just leave it unsaid and let it be up for interpretation? And if it's too low, then it's, uh, it could be a signal to the users that uh, maybe the, the project needs some tender loving care or, or something else. Okay. Um, so these are the three types of data I instead of just two now there are three types of enumerations and then I added two more concerns uh, um, first one is that um, um, we need to make sure that we can keep track of who makes a claim yes is it the maintainer who makes a claim is it the ecosystem host or whatever name it is for somebody who works for the publishing platform like PyPI or CPAN or um, NPM? Uh, someone in, in there, they could, could say, make a claim about the project. Uh, but we have to make sure it's done, it's done in a way that cannot be forged. Mm -hmm. Um, or, okay. or, or uh, which is an interesting conundrum. Uh, then suddenly we need to know something about identity and stuff like that. I, I, I'm not entirely sure to what extent uh, uh, Cyclone DX has a, a infrastructure for those kind of stuff. Well, probably end up investigating uh, when we when we develop the standards uh, and attestation support in Cyclone DX. Um, we what we ended up doing is we supported both um, electronic signatures and digital signatures. Electronic signatures yeah. being those things where you just kind of like do the fake initials, um, kind of like a DocuSign type of thing, right? Versus a digital signature, which is cryptographically applied. Um, we support both with the attestations uh, because we realized that in a lot of cases, the signatories actually don't have like PKIs rolled out to their CEOs type of thing, right? So we'll yeah. probably end up having a similar type of thing here where we will allow the, um, um, the, the attestation for this to be um, you know, signed and it will be up to the consumer then whether or not they want to trust that kind of signature or not. Right. Is there any plans to make any kind of more like thorough um, uh, uh, identification regime out there with this uh, that um, like for example um, uh, one discussion I had at the open source uh, um, uh, summit in Vienna this week uh, was around how uh, can we as uh, ecosystem uh, hosts um make sure that uh, um, uh, all of us are uh, identifying uh, ourselves in a similar manner so that no matter what ecosystem is being used downstream because among businesses there's very few that are just purely one everything is just on one platform one ecosystem there's always some something that uh, comes with the operative system at minimum sometimes you have also uh, legacy systems that need to be kept up to date so there might be some ruby uh, coming in the form of gems from one direction and some Perl from another direction some python some php i like guess it, it, it's a field full of flowers of all kinds and all if, if each uh, ecosystem has their own way of um, doing uh, identification and verification of it, identity. This is going to be a mess. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm asking: is is uh, is the th is the support that uh, um, Cyclone DX has? Is that uh, is it like its own thing in Cyclone DX, or is it based on a, 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 a like a public key standard or some other other thing that can be adopted also in uh, uh, across the ecosystems? There is uh, so right now uh, for X again, Cyclone DX has a couple different um, serialization formats that, that it supports. 
So instead yeah. of reinventing the wheel, uh, what we did is we took the uh, the ones that are used in the serialization formats and used those. So um, for XML, we use XML signature. And for uh, JSON, we use JSON signature format. Uh, JSF is uh, not widely used. Uh, it is used in some circles, um, but it is not widely used, although it is a web PKI standard. Uh, there okay. is a on there is a newer uh, uh, enveloped signature for a uh, specification for JSON uh, that I believe recently became an ISO standard. So it's uh, it's it's newer than JSF. Um, and we will likely be um, investigating the feasibility of migrating to that uh, with Cyclone DX 2.0. But for the time being, it's JSON signature format. Uh, 2.0 is scheduled for like 26 or something, or 25 or 28 or we, we Yeah, we haven't even discussed timelines for 2.0 right now. Right now, we're just discussing uh, what, what features we're going into Cyclone DX 1.7, which will be next year. Yeah. Yeah, you take one step at a time. Might as well do that. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, okay, that's good to know. So there's an identity aspect that, that uh, has to be covered. And then there is um, one interesting topic, which I had the pleasure of having a short conversation with um, uh, Georg Link earlier today at the, this conference in Vienna. And that is uh, around how to make um, the enumeration information, what the, the things that maintainers are sharing uh, in, uh, in such a way that uh, the intentioners are made clear and the interpretation doesn't lead into some bad interpretation. For example, uh, if a maintainer says they don't want to do, um, keep working on their project anymore uh, that might be interpreted by a, a user or a, a, a business that this it's time to switch to another um, mm -hmm. package which is strictly speaking not the open source way the open source way is to, to uh, you have the freedom to take responsibility you, you can adopt a module you can even fork a module uh, it's the freedom to act instead of the freedom to shop uh, the, right. and the mindset of of be, that you are a participant in this community and can actually uh, step in and take over or help or assist even uh, if what, whatever level of support uh, business is willing to or interaction level of interaction they're willing to to uh, give or, or spend the that 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 should be part of the, the decision process. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and not just like I said, oh, let's move away to, from this project. It's about to be abandoned. No, this is open source. We are like, this, um, it, it's, it's in the public so that we can uh, f make sure it continues to be in the public and can get benefit from what uh, the benefits, can benefit from the public scrutiny. Right. Uh, uh, and so I'm thinking, um, and I'm not entirely sure if this should be in scope, but it's definitely something I think should be a consideration when we pick the um, keys for the or the the terms we're using in the enumeration, as, uh, so that well, one, it doesn't uh, the, the 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 statuses and the need needs they don't uh, lead people to making assumptions or mm -hmm. bad interpretations and that, that it doesn't leak any sensitive information in uh, about the maintainer's personal life because uh, even if you say that uh, uh, you would like to have a co-maintainer doesn't actually mean that uh, uh, they, strictly speaking, should take care of uh, one of their parents because they're getting old or they just got a new baby uh, and, and their attention needs to be spent on that instead. It could mean anything, but uh, making creating situation where we assume stuff, uh, um, I think we should make a little bit of an effort at least to, so, so to avoid that kind of situation. So, so there's yeah. a privacy concern there. Basically. Yeah, of course. 
I think we need to spend uh, probably a little bit of time on the um, the definitions of each one of these enumerations uh, and yes. scrutinize every single word that we use, because uh, most people that adopt Cyclone DX will look at the documentation online. Uh, uh, some will look at the ECMA standard, but um, but most will actually just go to the online documentation viewer. And that provides a, 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 an explanation, regardless of JSON or XML. Yeah, I'm a, maybe a bit weird, but I actually look at the JSON specification <laughs> and okay. the commentary that's added there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I think that's closer to what's actually a parser would uh, do anyway. So I guess for me, that's more closer to the yep. authoritative information. That is if exactly the, what we use to build our documentation. So in, in Cyclone, yes. um, the JSON schema is actually the uh, the source of truth for the entirety awesome. of the specification. So, yep. That's brilliant. All right, so those are the no, now five concerns uh, uh, yep. or, or five deliverables we could say um the three deliverables and two concerns or two i don't know what to call those two extra uh things yeah. that um, uh, the identity is okay the identity manage, management uh, at the station is actually a, a deliverable but the concern around privacy is that mm -hmm. a deliverable no, I think that's just a consideration that you know when we're devising the spec, we we don't want to we don't want to do right. it in a way where it's it's very easy for users to divulge personal information. Yes. Okay. All right. right. Uh, uh, that's good. Um, so I I I didn't manage to get much time adding new use cases. I cleaned up a little bit of the um, first three, uh, just barely. So uh, and so it uh, could distinguish it from uh, number four and five. Right. Uh, or did we go get through them to number four last week, last time? Mm -hmm. uh, no. Oh, no, no. Four and five is new for this week. Okay. So U4, use case four, maintainer becomes unresponsive for unknown reasons. This is the situation where uh -huh. somebody just drops, drops off the map. We don't know what happens. Um, uh, the, it could be a, a death. It could be that somebody just decided to uh, go hiking in the Andes mountains uh, for a half a year. Uh, or, or, or move to another country and uh, become a surfing instructor. Uh, we don't know. St stuff like that, this does happen though. So we yep. need to be able to communicate. And the situation here is one where the maintainer is not available uh, for uh, making the final uh, statement. They're not here, they, they say, this is up for adoption. Uh, please, somebody take it off my hands. They just leave before mm -hmm. signing off for the last time. Um, so this is, in that sense, different from the use case number two, where the last remaining maintainer actually is, uh, puts right. a sign on the door before closing it and leaving, uh, saying right. this is now open for adoption. Right. That's uh, that's a that's, that's an important nuance to to make yes. clear. Right. Okay. Uh, and uh, the ma major effect this nuance has is that uh, um, after some time and a little bit of due diligence from any user who wonders what's going on, uh, where due diligence means try to reach to the maintainer, uh, to whatever side channels or uh, colleagues or friends and say, hey, what happened to this person? I cannot reach them. Uh, and uh, either learn what happened or uh, get uh, a, a enough ne negative responses or, or lack of responses to say that this seems this person seems to be actually uh, missing in action or or, yep. or just uh, move to South America uh, <laughs> or wherever. Uh, so so and with that information, they could go to to the ecosystem hosts and say. I've tried reaching them through these four means, these three means, whatever is the policy in that ecosystem, and ask, could I please take over 
this module, this component, because we use it actively at work and uh, there are fixes and bugs that need to be put upstream. Uh, and usually, at least in the CPAN community, this is a pretty uh, reasonable process. Uh, it takes a little bit of a while, but if somebody uh, has at least a, a minimum of um, uh, reputation, it, it's super easy to get uh, uh, um, uh, the, the, the main maintainer rights for uh, uh, and thereby adopting a package or a, a component. Um, uh, there's a question there though, and that is uh, there's a bunch of situations and considerations that happen throughout this process, and usually it's around. Uh, how far up the ecosystem dependency, in, internal dependency tree, this module is. Or the, um, so in, on, in CPAN, we call it the river of CPAN. And if something is upriver, it means other published module on uh, CPAN are, are downstream of this module, of this component. And typically, this would go for uh, important basic libraries and for functionality, or build tooling, or test uh, uh, frameworks, or um, uh, basic libraries for uh, very common activities like interacting with uh, an XML uh, uh, library or a, a JSON library or very, very common data formats that do basic operations that everybody uses. Those quote unquote important modules add a bit of extra consideration because like for example, um, uh, one of the like more, let's call him, Greatest friends of the CPAN and Perl communities. His name is Tim Buns, a super nice guy. Um, he uh, has not been updating his database driver, the DBI framework for Perlfunnet for a very long time, mm. and has been looking for somebody to take over that one. Uh, and it has been lying around waiting for somebody to take over because this is such a central module for everybody. It's literally the framework for making Perl um, uh, be able to connect to any type of database. So the different drivers, uh, yep. one for each database. All that is uh, critical for basically everybody who uses uh, an, an SQL, SQL database of some kind. So we cannot just give it away to anybody. Um, so the question here is, is that special case or the, the like the importance of the module is that something worth distinguishing when we're talking about uh, the decision like if a prop module is up for adoption should it is it meaningful to ask about or, or say that this is an important module up for adoption or uh, should we just leave it at that and whatever procedures that are uh, and considerations are left up to each ecosystem to uh, to uh, do it their way. Uh, what, or what, the, I, I'm not entirely sure here. I'm thinking having a guideline would be useful, but it's also probably something that is already established. Yeah, I, I ecosystems. Don't know. I mean, um, I don't think it's our the spec's responsibility to do it, but I do believe that open source ecosystems likely should identify um, the modules that have a pretty wide reach and a high impact if something were to happen, right? You yes. can consider them critical infrastructure or whatever, but um, something that's really, really important to that specific ecosystem. Now, you brought up some interesting things in terms of like secession. And um, I, I know LF historically has discussed uh, succession in open source before, but to my knowledge, it's only been uh, discussions. Has there been any work that you know of in terms of establishing mm -hmm. succession policies on these various ecosystems? 
No, I, I'm unaware of that. Uh, but um, I, I, I'm a little bit of a, a limited experience. So this is if if somebody uh, watches this on YouTube or something and can, uh, knows of something, then please reach out. That's what I can say because um, I'm blank on this. Um, I know there has been discussions, at, and, and certainly there has been. Uh, uh, people have urged others to create a succession plan. Uh, and usually that's spelling it out in some document or, or, or something that if the co-maintainer uh, takes over if the maintainer disappears or something happens like that. Or uh, it, uh, I don't know. It's usually like in the, in the Perl community, which these days uh, it isn't that big as it used to be. Um, sometimes the succession plan it, it doesn't ex most of the times it doesn't exist. Um, right. um, in that in those cases, uh, it would just it ha flag it as op open for adoption um, mm -hmm. and hope somebody steps up because well after all this is open source. Right. And uh, some so quite, sometimes people do step up, luckily, uh, because if it's in use, it, there's a reason to do so. Uh, but um, here's the new thing, which I'm hoping we can do with this uh, effort, what we're doing here right now. And that is to open the door for new users, like many uh, businesses that perhaps are aware of this dynamic um, um, in uh, uh, open source, did my did something happen with my audio? Yeah, it did something rather odd. It did like this really like loud buzzing sound, and now it like reverted to like like you sound different now. It's like almost using a different microphone. Right. Yeah, it is. Ah, I see what happened, uh, and that's because my camera died. Ah, yeah, yeah, you seem kind of frozen in time. Yeah, so I'll just shut up my camera here. It went, yep. went, uh, went out of battery. Uh, and it doesn't charge while streaming through USB. Uh, ah, okay. All right, so that's how that went. Um, so what that means you are now listening to the microphone in my headphones. I can hear you uh, just fine. Okay, cool. Uh, um, yeah, the, the, these here, here's an interesting take, uh, which um, probably might become a, a nice uh, nut to crack for the different ecosystems out there. Uh, and that is how, uh, to what extent should it be okay for a complete newcomer, quote unquote newcomer, uh, to the ecosystem uh, to take over a, pro, uh, a, a module? Because uh, right, right now the situation is that the people uh, and individuals who know about this this dynamic, this situation where you can adopt modules, take over responsibility, or become committed, those are like the techies in a uh, in a business um, uh, who care about open source stuff, and that's just like uh, some of them. That's not that's not always the case. Uh, and now we are putting this information into a, an SPOM that might end up on the table of a, a, a CIO or some other C-level uh, to get an overview of what are the, the situation around the security for our dependencies, for mm -hmm. example. And if it says, uh, if there's a visualization there showing that these modules here uh, don't, don't have a maintainer or like in this case, uh, uh, are upset up, put up for adoption because the maintainer has moved to South America um, or, or wherever. That, that creates a new um, class of view, <laughs> customers. Or mm -hmm. uh, um, so, so um, here's the question um, that might come with this. Uh, should each of these um, 
states here that we're talking about project uh, uh, states mm -hmm. do they do they need a guide or some instructions connected to them on what is the appropriate response if this you care about this project and it has ended up in a, a specific state or sh should this be a left over to the ecosystems um, like, which means in other words should uh, cyclone dx teach uh, these cios and uh, to become good open source citizens or should the ecosystems and the open source uh, packaging uh, uh, communities do the teaching it might be useful i mean i i'd hate to do this but i know that open source ecosystems they 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 they're in their own little bubbles for the most part yeah, and, that's how um, it is today, certainly. They, they, yeah. they, they, they define their own bubble, even. <laughs> right. So yeah. I'm not saying that this is the approach that we should take, but one approach that we could take is if we, again, we, we, we have the enum, we have a definition of what that means, and then we additionally uh, have a link to the... Um, the, the policy or the statement for that particular ecosystem where they can actually, um, you know, expand upon the definition of cyclone. So we're opening the door for, for providing a general kind of statement and allowing the ecosystems to expand on that if they so choose. How would that happen? Like uh, if... I, if um... A maintainer is a uh, wants to put up their module for adoption, or would they even be aware what such a link should be? No, I mean well, one of one of the things that Cyclone DX has been has been uh, known for really is a lot of innovation, and um, a lot of what's in the spec today, um, people aren't ready for, but in a year or two they will be. And we can think of this as one of those opportunities. Right now, the ecosystems, they don't have this information. But if we have a spec available that allows them to do that, we might be able to influence uh, behavior in the future. I'm not entirely sure. Like, uh, how would this look if, cons when considering that there are a whole lot of different ecosystems out there, each having their own uh explanation or way of doing things like i said i it's not it, like i said it's 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 one possible way of doing it because yeah, yeah okay. it, it allows like, it, it, it allows them to expand upon the definition but it also allows them to completely change the definition of what we what we said thus leading to fragmentation so um I don't know if Cyclone DX needs to be the authoritative source. I, I don't think so. Um, mm. But maybe maybe um, that is another sub-project within TC54, right? Maybe within TC54, we actually defined a really, really short and simple standard that actually says what these things mean. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. There's a there's a couple different ways to, that we can approach it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we need to give this a little bit of a think. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm a bit confused if this is even doable in a meaningful way because each okay in my mind, um, the maintainer starts off creating a uh, maintainer of a component start of writing there and as a source as bomb and then this is passed along as part of the publishing onto a, an ecosystem platform uploaded to cpan for example and uh, if there are any specific cpan relevant fields like for example download location uh, it, the cpan maintainer the hosts will be in charge of ensuring that these fields are updated 
uh, in the SPM for that package so that when the package is downloaded from something downstream, they get a correct value when it comes to, say, the download location for the SPOM and the download location for the, the package itself, the tarball. Yeah. Uh, so there's a, so there's, uh, there's a chain of custody in the sense for the metadata also. Um, now, in that case, I think um, uh, the ecosystem hosts could add a, a link to where the uh, different states uh, are listed and what kind of policies related to each of them. Uh, uh -huh. That could be doable in a sense. Um, so yeah, when I'm thinking about it, that might actually be useful and add a type of information. Um, yeah, yeah. Can yeah, I, like uh, like one of the prime motivations here, other than like just creating a, a, a viable eco, uh, like open source environment for everybody, uh, is that it still needs to help uh, the users and the the businesses to do a risk assessment with this right. information. Um, yeah. And I think one of the things that we could theoretically, um, you know, once we kind of, once we kind of um, get a POC of what this is actually going to look like, one of the mm -hmm. things that might be interesting is if we put this, whether it's a, whether it's a mono repo or just a single module in a, in a given repo, you could theoretically have a very short and simple Cyclone DX um, document that describes the component along with uh, the, um, the sustainability information and have absolutely no build materials in there whatsoever, right? You basically have a, a purpose-built way to convey sustainability information for a given um project a given repository if it's a mono repo a bunch of projects within that uh repo right um it could be really interesting actually yeah because one of the concerns i've gotten from others when i talked with them is that today the the s bomb that ends up on a production system eventually uh, together with uh say a uh, an RPM that has been installed, and this RPM is one of many dependencies that is needed for application to run. Um, uh, that SBOM relates to the state of the project and, uh, and, and that component's reality when it was built and packaged. Mm -hmm. And if the system hasn't been upgraded uh, or for some reason, uh, this will most likely be out of date. So mm -hmm. in a sense, it's meaningful that um, the uh, sustainability information also includes a link to the latest version of the sustainability metadata. So people can get an up-to-date information on what's actually needed in the project. Um, and in that case, we kind of need to figure out something around where uh, the the SBOM publishing location, for example, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and use that as a basis. And then uh, that question at that point sh should the the SBOM uh, include uh, uh, sustainability info that is up to date? And how do we do that? That works even if uh, um, uh, new releases have been pu published, uh, and the meaning that when a new uh, release with a new version is there, should all previous S bombs be updated, or should each um, uh, for all previous releases, or do we have a separate file? Do we are we requiring a separate additional? Light this bomb or whatever you just said, that contains only contains only the this, this sustainability information, uh, and that means in practice that 
the number of S bombs that are in a publishing directory on an ecosystem will be n plus one at any time. And right. it has to be always downloaded separately uh, in addition to the main S bomb and the package itself. Is it, yep. are, are we co complicating things too much here now? Or is no, this, Cyclone uh, already supports this. It, oh. This is actually really, really easy to do uh, for Cyclone. We just, I'm, I'm actually, um, we, we already have the mechanisms in place to decouple things, right? And then yeah. reference those things from other things. Uh, and we can do it in a format agnostic way. So the, the way it works in JSON is the exact same work, way it works in XML. So you don't have different ways of, of doing the same thing in different yeah. uh, serialization formats. And then, but we, if we, when we are like having a decoupled sustainability thing, we should probably, in my opinion, uh, define a naming, a, a file format naming convention. Like, is this called, um, you know, sustainability dash CDX dot JSON or whatever yeah. we come up with that way. Yeah. Like if I'm parsing a repository, that's the file I look, I look for. It's kind of like security dot MD, right? Or right. Contri contributions.md, right? You look for those right. specific file names. Um, yeah, and and would that be uh, like a lightweight, minimal S Cyclone DX file or yeah. something custom? Okay, yeah. No, something lightweight, like no S bomb, no dependencies, no components, just the sustainability information for those specific components that are in that repository yeah and the and the minimum all the uh, uh, stuff like uh, this is the cycle the x version 1.7 right uh, yeah. yeah um exactly so in and in a mono repo you could theoretically have a single file that represents every project within that mono repo or you could break it up like in a directory structure if you so choose um yeah but yeah cyclone could theoretically do both so yeah should we convey it in a um... well okay Th this is interesting and uh, uh, this is worth uh, noting down in so but just a point of or uh, like process here um do is it taking notes uh, about good ideas like this is so that's something uh, you're doing or i doing or uh, we are doing later at some point when we go through the recordings uh, or or is it some part of what's will happen later oh the poc um, work is that what you're asking no, no. Yeah, right now we just found out that uh, having a separate file uh, that uh, has only sustainability information it is a good idea. And mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, uh, I see, yes, I see you are writing down some requirements as we go. Okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah, I see yeah. it now. Awesome. Yeah, and okay. then one, and then we'll get to uh, what we'll do. This is how, how kind of how we work in, in all of the uh, uh, FWGs, but. Uh, we get to a point where we know what we're going to build. We kind of know how we're going to build it. And we typically do live coding. So we right. will come up with a POC like during these sessions. Um, I do that one because, um, uh, you know, it, it provides, it's kind of like a, a code review on steroids. Now, right now it's just you and I, but most of these sessions have four or five, 10 people, whatever. And having all eyes while we're coming up with a POC, as well as all eyes when we're actually developing the um, uh, the JSON spec, which again is a source of truth for the entirety of the specification, right, is a really valuable thing. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, I see we only have a few minutes left before yeah. we're due to be finished. So, so let's just quickly go through the use case number five here, if that's okay with you. Yep, because uh, I think we landed with, uh, on a really good uh, point with the uh, number four. Um, a maintainer which is to hand off project to a core maintainer. So this is basically so everything is uh, under control and nothing dramatic has happened. Somebody just says, you know what, I, I don't code this uh, anymore. I've learned the Raku and this is the, my, the I see myself my, in my future. I'm just doing that. Uh, could you please take over? Uh, and I have a core maintainer. I would like that person to take over the project. Um, the, and then you, it's handed over. Now, 
there's some complications around that, which I'm completely blank on because um, when you have uh, as, uh, when you publish something, uh, there's a copyright law in the US and there's mm -hmm. in the French legal, legal tradition, there's an, an yeah. author's right uh, that you cannot give away. So in a sense, uh, it, it, while you give away maintainership, um, uh, ownership is in a sense still retained in many situations. So I'm, I'm not entirely sure the legalese around that, but the process of handing over the maintaining job is still necessary, even if there's some uh, un, some uh, legal uh, stuff that needs to be clarified. Is that something we should worry about, or should we just say, like, like yes, this is what we call it, and move on? Um, Do we need lawyers involved? I don't believe so. And the reason why I say that is that when you create an SBOM in Cyclone or even in SPDX, it doesn't really matter. Um, uh, both formats allow you to capture the copyright information. And um, you know that information can be obviously in your SBOM and you know lawyers can um, analyze that. And if, they're, if they sense any risk, then that they can Ooh. act upon that. So yeah. I don't necessarily know if we need to capture that here because it's technically already a feature of both SPDX and Cyclone. We can do that today. Yeah, and uh, and maybe it's actually not even relevant because strictly speaking, uh, copyright information is already contained in the package this is referring to. And mm -hmm. the package yeah. says these are the original uh, uh, maintainer and the copyright statement might be as intended unless it was created uh, or somebody transferred copyrights or, or whatever right. and it's all there and strictly speaking we don't have to take care of it. so okay so in the sense that my worries uh i'm thinking now they may be unfunded or un yeah right not necessary all right okay awesome. does this make sense this makes a lot of sense i'm going to ponder on those enums yeah. And I think it would be really interesting maybe next time we meet up to start going through those enums and actually start defining what those things actually mean. Um, yeah. That Those definitions will be in the JSON schema, again, which is the source of truth. So the, that will uh, yeah. that will appear in the ECMA document as well. So, but yeah, getting clear definitions, I think is, is would be a great yeah. start. Should we, uh, I have like, we have three enumerations. Should we start with one of them or the yeah. juicy one yeah, yeah. first? One or at a let, time. Let, let, <laughs> let, Whichever. Let's, let, <laughs> let, let's start with the project states next time. Okay. It's a shorter list. It's a shorter list and uh, it's in a sense the most important one. And, uh, okay. And, and because it says if this is under, if this is maintained or not. Mm -hmm. or, do, or does it need a maintainer? Uh, right. So, uh, uh, yeah, Let, let's start with the first one. And uh, I'll uh, make sure to add uh, any extra use cases uh, on that to uh, on that topic uh, so we can have a complete set when it comes to this. I think we should bring Perfect. those maybe one or two. So we'll, right. we'll do that next time. All right. Sweet. Thank you. Cheers. All right. Take care. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Peace.